to you all. Hope you all are safe and healthy at home. Please take good care of yourself and keep learning. So this is another chapter I brought in front of you. Today in class fifth, we are going to learn the third chapter that is the tug of war. Okay, so let's see what a tug of war is. I'm sure you must have heard at least or if not, you must have seen somewhere this game being played. Right now we'll know what actually tug of war is. Okay. Why? So tug of war is a sport that puts two teams against each other in a test of strength. Teams pull on opposite ends of a rope with the goal being to bring the rope a certain distance in one direction against the force of the opposite team's pull. So here what happens is there are two teams, two sides people stand and they pull a rope and the rope whoever pulls it towards their side, the strengthier people are the ones who win. It can be between any two people, any two group of people. It cannot happen between only two people. It has to be at least a group of people so that the entire rope is being pulled. So it can be between the uncles and aunties, between the males and the females, boys and the girls, or a kind of groups that you make, right? If you can decide and you want to keep an activity or a game like this, it's a really good good activity which can be held even at uh, you know a small space area as well. So there's a big rope which has been used to pull from both the sides and whichever side uh, pulls it more towards them, that, that, teams, that team wins idly. So that is called as a tug of war. Okay, so this is idly how it happens. Here, so with this picture, can you understand how the tug of war can happen? Right. So there are two types, two sides. People keep on pulling from each side and whoever pulls towards their side, the entire group or the entire row, that team wins the race or wins the competition. OK, that is called a tug of war. So a chapter is nothing but similar to that. But here, of course, there are no two people or there are not group of people, but there are animals who are going to have a I'll be reading the chapter and simultaneously I'll keep on explaining to you about it. Okay. One peaceful morning, a hare called Umundla, who lived by the Zambezi River, was bored. He felt like creating a bit of fun for himself. So he looked around to see what he could do. It gave him great pleasure to trouble other animals. Suddenly, he spotted two dignified old residents of the area, Rhino and Hippo. So what happened? One day morning, this Umwundla or a hare, the rabbit who has been called as Umwundla, a lovely name been given to him, right? Who lived by the Zambezi River, was bored. So this is just the name of the river being given, Zambezi River. He was bored. So he thought of making fun of two animals. So two dignified old residents. He has mentioned over here two dignified residents. So dignified means who are very calm and serious and who are, you know, the old people who are staying there since a long time. They have been given a, a reputed place, a, a reputed, uh, what do you say, a, stator, a, a, a status. So it is like a dignified person that is a deserving respect that you are giving to the residents out there. So, uh, like we call the dignified guests or judge who have got some kind of a reputation or they have got some kind of um, a position, right? So here he is calling Rhino and Hippo as the two deserving um, residents of that area, okay? And he wanted to trouble those two animals over there. He was not very happy to see them peaceful and calm. So he thought to trouble them. Hippo, although aware of his ugliness, was very proud of his strength. Now, Umundla's mind was a treasure house of pranks. He hopped up to the river bank and called, Oh, mighty one, why do you say you are so strong? Even I, with my small size and thin legs, could beat you in a tug of war. What happened? How is he trying to uh, pull out Hippo? He went to him and he is trying to instigate him. Instigate him is trying to you know, um, uh, force him to listen to what uh, Umwundla was saying. So he's trying to, uh, trying and telling him he's pulling out from his sleep. So Hippo, he was aware that he's not very good and beautiful and handsome kind of a person. He's like, you know, he's to stay, he always uh, uh, is living in the 
slushy water in the inside the water which is not so good and all that he loves to be there so he is like very good in that part and he knew that he was quite strengthy we know that right he was quite strengthy he's quite uh, they are quite a stronger animal so they are very uh, strong kind of animals over there in the jungle right now omundla's mind was a treasure house of pranks why treasure house house of pranks he had that cunning kind of a thinking he was always thinking of some kind of you know pranks pranks i'm sure you all must be knowing you must be doing those pranks with your teacher with your friends right like you you try to tease them fasana chidhana right that that kind of pranks so he was uh, he had a treasure house of pranks so he hopped up to the river bank he went to the river bank and he called out to the hippo oh mighty one now he's calling hippo the mighty one right why mighty one he's huge big right so he's is quite strengthy he's quite stronger so he's calling out to the uh, to the hippo and saying oh mighty one why do you say you're so strong even i with my small size and thin legs could be to in a tug of war so he's trying to uh, poke hippo out there who is being calmly sitting quietly sitting he's trying to tell him that in spite of you being so strong and this thing i am much better than you i can have a good uh, tug of war with anybody being in small in size okay next hippo ignored umumla and his ridiculous boasting but the hare kept on pestering him at last hippo replied in the hope of getting some peace and quiet a tug of war all right i'll show you my little long eared voices but finally what happens hippo hippo was trying to ignore the hare he was trying to ignore umumla but to uh, i mean but hippo was sorry uh, hare was not ready to listen he was or he had already planned that he is going to have a tug of war between hippo and the rhino but so that's why he was not ready to give it up hence he was still behind a hippo and trying to instigate him again and again but hippo hippo earlier he was ignoring him his ridiculous boasting what is ridiculous is silly like he keeps on praising himself boasting is nothing but you know somebody who keeps on uh, praising themselves their own uh, their own beauty their own wealth their own strength so the one who keeps on boasting about themselves who keeps on praising about themselves okay so he he ignored umul uh, umulla earlier for his silly and uh, annoying for his silly boasting or silly praise that he was keeping on doing but the hare kept on pestering him what is pestering pestering is like when you trouble somebody to the core like you know i want certain things you must be definitely telling your mother or your father right i want this thing today i want to eat pizza at any cost please buy me pizza and give me that is like you're behind something continuously unless and until you achieve that that is called as pestry okay so similar manner even uh, the hare was trying to pester hippo to the um, utmost possible thing that he can and get the thing done what he was wishing to and what he wanted to do he wanted to have a tug of war right so what happens at last hippo was all tired and he gave it up and he said fine a tug of war all right i'll show you my little long eared noises now he's calling this little long eared noises to whom is calling the hare or the rabbit who's having a long ear right so he's calling that here a little long eared noises noises who keeps on troubling continuously okay. right so that was a uh, hippo i bet i could pull you out of water over the termite hill when i shout pull from behind the hill you must pull with all your might for i shall surely beat you so now you can see this is just to show you uh, the the pictures for your better understanding of the meaning okay so what is here this is your hare umulla who is chasing or who is teasing or who is pestering hippo who is in the water you can see hippo in the water and this is nothing but your small ant hill so this is what he is calling as an ant hill you must have seen an ant hill right so this is the ant hill a small ant hill and he tries to tie them both one is in this corner of the river and another one is the other side of the river okay so here the hare is trying to uh, uh, try tie your hippo towards this corner and uh, rhino is towards the other corner of the river So in this manner, he is going to tie the rope between those two animals and make them ready for the tug of war. 
ओके नेक्स्ट पैरा मुदला डांस विद डिलाइट he pointed to an old rounded mound of earth beyond the river bank so now the way you saw a uh, uh, ant has similarly there is a small kind of a mountain which has been made which is called as a mound of earth right a mound mound me jaise wo a small kya kehte hain a small hill a small type of a hill which is like a lot of when you pile up certain uh, your your uh, uh, what is a lot of leaves together and you pile up and you keep it that's that becomes a small mound right so it is something like that related to so uh, umulla danced with delight he pointed to an old rounded mound of earth beyond the river bank i bet i could pull you out of the water and over that termite hill he taunted right he taunted umulla then dashed off to a braid a long strong rope when he came back he tied one end to hippo's hind leg saying when i shout pull from behind the hill you must pull with all your might for i shall surely beat you so here again the hare is trying and telling him that i am going to be towards the other side of the termite hill so he's calling that as your termite hill okay so he's telling i bet you i'm going to pull you out of this water which you are you know happily and quietly sitting over here i'm going to pull you out of here and he kept on taunt, taunting uh, uh, the hippo so he said uh, and then he said with then a dash of braid a long strong rope so what is a braid like uh, the girls tie their uh, hair like right? like a plate so it is called as a long braid so he's going to make the rope in that manner and tie it around the hippo's hind leg okay and he's telling when i shout pull from behind the hill You must pull with all your might. So you should come out and you should pull yourself with all the strength that you can. For I shall surely beat you. Otherwise, I will not leave you alone. I am going to surely give the uh, you know I am going to surely give it back to you, right? Right. Hippo thought that Umunla's foolishness had at last got the better of him. He said nothing and settled down again in the water. He soon dozed off. a hippo was not very uh, keen what umunla was saying so he thought he's just kidding he's just doing time pass for some time and he might forget so uh, he was not very uh, happy with his foolishness that he was taking care of so hippo thought that umunla's foolishness had at last got the better of him he said nothing and he he ignored idly umunla and he went back to sleep so doze off means you're sitting at one place you sometimes get bored and you doze off right you you're watching something you're very sleepy you doze off you doze off means you sleep for some time so a small short nap is called as dozed off right so umulla took the other end of the rope now as i showed you in the earlier picture one side was hippo another side he's going to take the rope to the rhino umulla took the other end of the rope and crept around to the other side of the hill where old rhino was sleeping he picked up some fierce little red ants from a nearby hole and quietly dropped them in rhino's ear rhino awoke with a grunt and shook his head trying to scratch his ears good morning piped umvandla i was just coming here to warn you of the ants nest oh i see one has crawled into your ear now how smart this uh, umvandla was just check out what he did he tied one uh, rope to the part of rope towards hippo's hind leg and then he was taking the another rope towards the other side of the hill crept around to the other side crept means slowly moving like without making any sound without the other person knowing so he crept around to the other side of the hill where who was sleeping rhino was sleeping you know rhino right with the one horn so rhino was also sleeping towards the to the other side of the hill and while going to tie to rhino's hind leg he happens to take up some or pick up some red ants right fierce little red ants now he's telling clearly over your fierce little red ants we know that right how red ants bite us if the red ants bite us it is really very difficult we keep on itching for a longer period of time and it's painful so he see he's so smart he picks up those red ants and tries to drop him into the uh, uh, drop them into rhino's ear and he does that very smartly right and the moment he drops uh, those red ants into rhino's ears rhino awakes he wakes up with a roar with a grunt and 
he tries to shook his head shaking his head he's trying to remove those hands which was there in his ear and tries to scratch his ears so grunt over here means a sound that an animal makes okay especially rhino and hippos the way they make a grunting sound that is called as grunt okay so he shooks his head and he's making a, a grunting sound and he gets very irritated he's he he gets very um, disturbed as well and what uh, umwala says over here hair very unknowingly like he's very ignorant and he doesn't realize innocently he says i was just coming here to warn you of the ants nest he doesn't and he he's acting as if he is not aware about the ant which is there or the ant which is entered into rhino's ear wherein he himself has put into it right oh i see one has crawled into your into your ear and he's saying that i could see the the ant being crawling into your ear right so so innocently he's acting over here here you can see the picture which will give you the clear understanding of what a mount is not this is what a mount is i was talking about the mount and this is a mount like a small mountain or a hill right and this is dozing off how you doze off huh <laughs> this is the grunting sound okay so this was the grunting sound that uh, uh, an animal makes or hear the hippo sound you can hear and this is how you doze off right so that was a picturization of your meanings so that you can understand it better <laughs> next para may i help you remove it now here again he's trying to be very modest and very kind to mulla and he's trying to help out rhino by saying that may i help you remove it and with a great pretense of concern now he's showing so much of concern towards that rhino right uh, okay i'm i'm concerned about your pain and uh, irritation that's happening so i may help you to remove those ants so with a great pretense of concern pretense is nothing but trying to act okay and uh, somebody who's trying to uh, pretend somebody who's trying to say that okay i'm there to help you out but actually he doesn't want to or they didn't intend to help you it's just a pretense of happening so pretense of concern he pushed the ants in further so what did the uh, hair do over here he tried to push those ants which was outside or which came out perhaps more into it so he pushed them inside the ear of the rhino more further that was most kind of you said the unsuspecting rhino now poor rhino over here wasn't aware what the hare was doing what umunna was doing so that's why it has been called as the unsuspecting rhino so he is not suspecting anything untoward or anything wrong about the hare he trusted uh, umudla what he was doing and he was very kind towards him and said it's that's most kind of you he was showing his gratitude towards the hare your small feet are just right while mine are far too large for the job so he's telling the rhino is telling to the hare that your small feet are perfect for uh, removing those ants from my ears if i'm using my my hand it is too large i cannot do that so rhino if he has to do it himself it would have been very difficult for him to remove it right you have no idea what trouble i have with ants and he grumbled on like cranky old people everywhere so imagine he was so irritated with those ants inside his ears he was so troubled by those ants so he's explaining the hare or umunla that he has got a lot of trouble because of those ants in his ear and he grumbled and uh, he he grumbled means he made those you know he was little angry he was disturbed uh, like the old cranky people how the cranky people are the old people are sorry they get cranky at times right it's like when they get old they get aged they feel that these a certain things should be uh, you know sh should be fulfilled so when the small children are similarly when your small children are there or kids are there one or two years they get cranky for certain things they want they are stubborn uh, to get certain things they they pester their parents so similar manner here rhino was very angry and he was very disturbed because of those ants well replied the cheeky umbunla my feet may be small but they are very strong i challenge you to a tug of war i bet i can pull you right over this anthill and into the river now again the hare or umbunla started to 
show off his strength and he was trying to boast himself again so he's telling over here my feet may be small but they are very strong so he's trying to again instigate the rhino over here so earlier he did the same thing with the hippo now he's trying to do the same thing with the rhino and he's telling i may be small but uh, I, I am much stronger than what you are hence i can always pull you out of this river out of this river and across that anthill or over that anthill right he's so he's telling here is telling that i'm so strengthier i'm so stronger than you that i can pull you out from there is that possible no right but still he's trying to praise himself and say that. old rhino snorted with laughter but at last he too was pestered into playing umulla's game so the head tied the other end of his rope around rhino's hind leg then he hurried to the top of the hill he hit in a little hollow and called loudly pull so what happened rhino also rhino also snorted with laughter snorted with laughter he again made that laughter sound and he was like uh, he uh, sarcastically he laughed at him and said fine okay so he also gave it up rhino also had to give it up towards the hair that he was trying to do he pestered him also the same manner how he did to the hippo and finally the hair tied the other end of his rope around the rhino's hind leg also and what he did he hurried to the top of the hill he went and hid there on the top of the hill okay and he called out loudly pull so now it was for both of them it was for the rhino and the hippo as well he called out pull and what happened I to give you how they pull each other so when they are pulling this is how it happened right by now the ants began to bite deep inside right by now the ants began to bite deep inside rhino's ear and with a bellow of pain rhino charged off poor old hippo had forgotten about umbulla he was dozing peacefully in his pool when there was a sudden hard tug on his hind leg before he knew he was dragged out of the river and half way up the hill when hippo realized what was happening he dug his heels and gave a mighty heave and a great tug of war started in earnest what happened by now the ants began to bite deep inside rhino's ear so rhino was getting more irritated he was in too much of pain a bellow of pain is too much of pain right a, a painful voice a noise was coming out so rhino was very painful uh, it was in too much of pain because of those ants which had entered into his ears so he deep inside and rhino charged off he got very angry and he was so irritated and troubled and disturbed that he just got up he just charged off from that river poor old hippo had forgotten about umbrella now hippo who was dozing off there we read it in the earlier paragraphs he happened to doze off happily right he didn't realize uh, that he was tied with the rope and umbrella had come and etc things so he had forgotten totally he was dozing peacefully in his pond when there was a sudden hard tug on his uh, on his hind leg so what happened from the other side rhino woke up right he charged off and he got up so when rhino got up even he was pulled right the hippo was also pulled out from the other side of the river and he was dragged out of the river and half way up the hill so both of them are stronger animals so from one side when rhino pulled out and when rhino woke up or got up automatically hippo was also pulled by that rope so that's when hippo realized that what was happening and he couldn't control himself he just dug his heels and gave a mighty heave just try to pull himself or he showed his strength over here and the great tug of war started in earnest so actually the tug of war happened to start right that's how the idea started with the tug of war why because of umundla who had tied both the ropes on both the ends of uh, both the hind legs of rhino and hippo and they happened to without their without their concern and unknowingly they happened to get charged off with each other next each of the powerful animals strained every muscle and worked themselves up into a fine fury so they were both pulling from each side because they were not aware as to what is happening they ideally didn't know what the tug of war was and what is going to happen they were only talking to umbrella but they didn't realize that he was actually getting it done from them 
and the blood laughed so much that he fell over and went rolling down the side of the ant hill. When they saw him there, the two great animals knew they had been tricked. So until then, they were not aware as to what is happening. They just charged over each other. They put their muscles and they were working hard, uh, hard in pulling the rope. But when they saw the hare or umunla rolling down with laughter <clears throat> down side of the ant hill, that's when they realized that they both were fooled or they both were tricked by this animal. Okay, and they get more angry. So you can see the meaning. Bellow is emit a deep, loud roar, typically in pain or anger. When you are too much of pain, how you emit a loud sound, that is loud roar. Okay. And he lift or haul something heavy with great effort. So here rhino and hippo happen to lift both of them equally from both the sides uh, with great effort, right? Okay. And that's how earnest is, showing sincere and intense conviction. Sincere and intense conviction, why we are saying over here, that means why earnest? Because now without uh, knowing, un unknowingly, they were a part of the tug of war. And they were trying to pull out from uh, both the sides with all their might or with all their strength. Okay. So that was uh, actual tug of war which happened. Now you can see the picture how it is happening. Here from here, uh, hippo is being tied with one side of the rope and another side, the rhino is being tied up, right? And this is the ant hill, uh, over the ant hill, how it has been uh, shown. And you can see Umunla, how happily he's laughing and rolling over that place. So looking at angry at Umunla. So rolling with anger, they charged after Umunla, hoping to trample him before he could tell the other animals how foolish they had been. So they wanted to idly uh, crush Umunla or uh, you know, charge onto Umunla and uh, give him properly for what he has done before he could go and announce it to other animals that they were fooled because uh, he, he knew or uh, the animals Rhino and Hippo knew that this is what ideally Umunla is going to do. He's going to call out and uh, call out other animals and say that these two animals were foolish and they were tricked by Umunla. As they charged, the hare waited until the last possible moment and then skipped out of the way. Hippo and Rhino were going so fast that they couldn't stop. So what happened? This uh, hare or Umunla was very smart. We have understood by now. He was very smart and he was waiting until the last minute. Okay, He knew that both of them are tied together and it was not very easy for both of them to catch hold of Umunla. So he was waiting until they reached near to him or they could uh, possibly come next to him. Okay, So he waited until the last possible moment and then he skipped out of the way rushed out from there he escaped himself from there then what happened hippo and rhino were so fast they both are very curious animals and they are more they run also very fast so they were very fast that they couldn't stop right what happened because of that with a tremendous crash they met head on they met with each other's head banging to each other hurting each other terribly so by doing that what happened they happened to hurt each other very badly in a blind rage, they started to fight with each other until they heard Umunla, who was weeping with laughter. So what happened? They were very fast, right? They were running so fast to catch hold of Umunla, but they happened to hit each other instead. Hit each other how? Because they both were tied together. So they couldn't do anything much but come together and hit on each other's head. And they hurt each other terribly. So because of that hurt, they happened to fight amongst themselves on their own so they get they got so angry with the blind rage they were not aware what is happening with the blind rage they started to fight with each other until they heard umunla who was speaking with laughter and of course umunla was enjoying all this that was happening in front of him he was laughing weeping with laughter means what like we weep loudly right when we are sad we cry and we weep loudly here he was weeping with laughter. He was so happy and he was enjoying all this moment. He was just, you know, he couldn't control his laughter. He was very loud enough. He was laughing and laughing. Umunla realized that at last the game was up. And so he jumped up and sped off into the bushes. Now he knew that the game was all over. They both have uh, done the best of their part. So looking at the situation and the scenario, he just quickly runs away from there. And he runs off into the bushes. He could hardly wait to tell the other animals how he had made fools of hippo and rhino. 
right? So he was so happy that he made fools of these two animals. So he rushes to the bushes, he rushes to the animals, other animals, and informs them. To this day, Rhino thinks the little red ants are still in his ears. So even now, the Rhino feels that the little red ants are still in his ears. Some say that the ants are so far down that they live in his brain. So somebody feel that, I mean, it's been said that it is there in his brain. It has entered so much deep into the rhino's brain also. And that's why rhino is always so bad tempered. He gets angry very soon. He gets furious very soon. So that is why rhino is called as the bad tempered person, bad tempered animal. As for Hippo, you will find him still searching the riverbanks at night, hoping to find Umundla and throw him into the hungry crocodile. So uh, Hippo at the other end keeps on looking out for Umunla to throw him into the river or into the water so that he is being caught hold by the hungry crocodiles. Ended the story. It's quite interesting. It's a very beautiful story, nicely written. So you all can just read the story once from your side. Please make sure you're using the correct pronunciations and the word meanings that are there, there are quite a few word meanings, children. It is a little, uh, you know, difficult and a different word meanings apart from the textbook uh, where they have given certain word meanings they have given in your books. But apart from that, there are certain words which are not being given. I have put it across over here as new words and meanings. So I want you all to go through these new words and meanings and possibly write it down as well and learn them also. Okay. So just to uh, brush up with these new words and meanings, which are pranks, boasting, mount, drate, dozed off, crept, fears, grunt, grumbled, bellow, heave, and tramp. Okay. So most of these words have been explained during the explanation. Still, if any doubts, you can get in touch with me. Happy learning. Please do read the lesson. That's what is important. So see you in the next video. Take care.